fiction. Science fiction. Horror. Fantasy. Crime. LGBT. Thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery. And welcome back into the House of Mystery. And today we are continuing our conversations with authors that have contributed to the Larceny and Last Chances Anthology. It's a book of 20 new stories of mystery and suspense. And today we've got Christina Bufus. Thank you for being here, Christina. Yeah, nice to be here. Christina, how did you find this or get into this? I saw a call for submissions on the Short Mystery Society listserv, and I've had this story. It was already written. I thought, why not? And I, I sent it in, and Judy liked it, and, and that's how I first found out about it. I have to say, I, I'm not as good at submitting as I should be. So now your story, Christina, is called Hit and Run. So let's tell us about uh, what's the premise of that The story? premise is it takes place in the Bay Area, and the um, – it stars a couple, Marcy and Ted, and they're both high school teachers. He's a basketball coach, and she is a high school English teacher. And as we all know, teaching does not pay very well. And they are surrounded, as in the Bay Area in general, there's a great disparity in wealth between people who can own property and have houses. And she's in her early 30s and goes to a dinner party at her friend's house up in Marin, which is an affluent place, and Ted is drunk. On the way home, he hits somebody, and it's a hit and run. And and they weren't sure if he hit someone or hit an animal. They heard a sound, and then they're blackmailed. The two of them are blackmailed. So you're ready from your own experience? Is this the story? I am. Or? It's funny that um, I have a, a mystery series, are also starring a teacher. And I, I and until Judy put Greg and me together on this panel, I wasn't really thinking about that. But, yes, um, I was a teacher. I taught high school uh, I started in high school teaching, and then I got a Ph.D., and then I went to the university. Um, and I also taught at the San Francisco jail for many years. And living in San Francisco, I had once gone to this dinner party. It was a New Year's Eve party, and I was just struck by here I was, a struggling teacher, working three different at three different locations, trying to make ends meet. And these people who weren't much older than I am had this fabulous house, and I just thought, how is this possible? How, how do people afford such things and how are they all together you know at you know 33 and I'm you know working four jobs and teaching in four different locations um so there's some class conflict in the end story as well but yes I guess you're right what you know so I've taught for 20 years and and did you hit an animal or a person <laughs> no. uh, Christina did, did you find it difficult making the transition from academic writing to uh popular fiction writing what was your experience in some ways, um, I did. I started writing short stories during the pandemic. I'd always wanted to be a writer, and I wrote short stories in sixth grade, and then I got a PhD because I was convinced that I would learn how to write a book. Of course, it was an academic book, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I spent nine years in grad school. I took a, a class at, to write a short story a week, and this was during the pandemic, and I was working remotely. I was no longer teaching by then. I'd been a freelance journalist for about nine years before that. I, I, I couldn't grade another paper. You know, I had 150 students' essays to grade every week, and I dreaded Sunday nights. And it came to the point where I was driving across the Bay Bridge in San Francisco, and I told my husband I'd rather drive off the Bay, Bay Bridge than drive over the Bay Bridge to, to teach again. And he said, well, you should just quit. <laughs> just quit. So I did and became a freelancer and um, freelanced for many, many years and then got a full-time job as a health writer. So I was used to writing for nonfiction, and I'd written an, um, a nonfiction book that completed its guide to writing nonfiction, but I wasn't used to writing fiction. And so when I started, I mean, I, I did in, in grade school. Um, I took a course and had no idea how to write a short story, but the idea was that, like, if you write one a week um, for a year, one of them is about to be bound to be good. And I took all the online courses that I could, and I read all the books. And fiction writing is a different, much different, of course, than, than nonfiction writing. But I am not, uh, I, I do not outline, um, which I do in, in nonfiction, but I do not for, for fiction. I find it um, impossible. So I didn't know where this story was going, and I didn't know where most of my stories were going. But the class I was taking said, start with a character in a setting with a conflict, and then just write from there. 
And that's the way the, the story was born. I think, I feel like I'm still learning. I've got a few novels and I'm working on another novel. I think it's my fifth or sixth, but I, I feel like I'm still learning my craft. So I still do workshops and, you know, write stories that don't see the light of day. Is there a subtext or a meaning behind this short story? I always think of things like Twilight Zone when you do sh short stories. And I always think about a quick meaning or subtext. Well, I think part of the subtext is what I mentioned um, before about the class differences, which are particularly apparent in the San Francisco Bay Area and in the teaching profession, which is undervalued and underpaid. But really, I want readers to be entertained. I love short stories that have a twist. And the first time I wrote this short story, it didn't have a twist at the end, and I wasn't very satisfied. And then when I thought of the twist later and and went back and revised it, I was, I, I liked it. I, I love short stories that have a twist at the end where you don't see it coming. I don't think I'm that clever all the time, but, but it worked in this one. With the stories and with the anthology now, do you um, have social media? Do you like to interact with uh, readers and people that might pick up the anthology or anything that you do? So what's your social media and website? I do have, have a website. It's christinabufis.com. Um, I am on X as CB Writes 2 with the number 2. X is sort of my platform, although lately I'm not really um, on it as much. I do like people to go to my website. They can sign up for a newsletter and see my other books there. And as I said before, I'm not great with promoting my own work. I have to get better at that. Fantastic. Now, of course, we'll have uh, both your websites, and, of course, the book is up, and it's available now. So uh, we thank you for being here. So, Christina Bufus, thanks. This has been a production of the House of Mystery Radio Show. To find out more about our show, guests, or hosts, go to our website at houseofmysteryradio.com.